Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another resin project. So today, we have resin mushrooms. I found a cute little mold set that makes five different resin mushrooms. And today we are going to be pouring them. I'm really excited because I love, love, love resin mushrooms. Resin mushrooms. Last year I made these two. Um, and I was pretty darn smitten with those, especially because they are jars. So I can literally put things in them, and hide things in them. Not that I have anything to hide, but you know, it's just always fun. So when I found this little set that makes one, two, three, four, five different size, different shape mushrooms, I was pretty excited because I wanted to add to my collection. I ended up making two last year so that I had more than one and I put them on my little cute shelf. Um, but the five is amazing. So we are going to go ahead and get started. As you can see, um, they are different colors. I really love this copper and rose gold leaf uh, look the best. And I could have easily made them all this color. This pink one was the first one I ever made. And while I do like her, I wasn't as in love with her as I thought, which is why I made the copper. I went ahead and made a white and a pink version this year because I had a whole bunch of resin to use up from another project. And I thought, well, this way they can kind of coordinate between the copper and the pink. I probably need another white one and probably another either this color pink or this color pink one to kind of tie it all together. Probably another this shape and maybe one of the little ones kind of tie it all in together as opposed to just having copper. If I was making these from scratch from the very beginning, I would have probably just made them all copper just because that's what I tend to like the best. But I, I don't know. As much as I like the copper the best, they look really pretty with the contrast of the different colors. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You'll see that I uh, I struggled a bit with making these, not because the molds were difficult, although they were, or not because uh, mixing the resin was hard, but because I typically mix resin for multiple projects at a time. And by the time I got to making these, they were my fifth project of the afternoon, my resin was too hot and it cured uh, prematurely and it's popped and caused issues. But it all turned out okay. I went ahead and let it cure and then I mixed new fresh resin to finish. That of course made the difference between pieces like this or this where the two colors of resin mix really nicely and little guys like this, where there's a harsh line in between the two. So stay tuned, keep that in mind when you are pouring yours. Um, there's not necessarily a right or a wrong way to do it. They just look different at the end. So if you're looking for it to look one way or the other, you'll know how to pour it. Either way, sometimes the best resin projects are the ones where you have to overcome different issues. Resin is definitely not a one trick pony where it always does the same things. You're always having to fix something just the way it goes. So if you are working with fast curing resin, here is one way to fix that. Let's work our way through it, starting with the mixing. For our resin today, we are going to be using Maker Poxy, which is perfect when you are doing uh, any kind of craft projects. So the main goal for this is you're going to be using equal parts of part A and part B. So whether you're doing 50 milliliters or 500, we'll use equal portions. So 25 of part A and 25 of part B or 250 of A and 250 of B. I use these larger bottles with the pumps because when you're pouring in large portions, it's a lot easier than pouring them by hand. But if you're doing small projects, say this is your first resin project, you may get just the smaller bottles and use smaller portions. Now, because I'm doing a big pour, I'm using a big 
silicone cup to mix in with a big silicone spoon. You can use smaller cups and even popsicle sticks or disposable cups. I have quite a few of these uh, tiny cups. This one holds 200 milliliters. So even 50 in this cup would be just fine for the projects we are doing today. Right now we should be, yep, right around 50 milliliters. So for our summit sign, that is more than enough. Go ahead and mix it. You'll mix for three minutes, stirring evenly, scraping the bottoms and the side. But like I said, I am working on several projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going and I will be back in a second once this guy is all mixed up. Now, if this is your first resin project, make sure you are safe. I am working outside with proper ventilation. If you can't work outside, an open window, a fan, um, a respirator is always perfect. I will link the ones I use down below. You also want to make sure you have gloves on. As far as resins go, this one is safe, but all resins are toxic to some degree. So you'll want to take the proper safety precautions and then you're good to go. Same as if you were painting a room, you want to use gloves, respirator, everything that you might need for breathing and fumes. So, all right, I'll see y'all in a minute. It has been about four minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pop all the bubbles that come to the top. And now we're going to set this aside for just a second. The bubbles will keep rising to the top and we're gonna get our colors ready. pink. These are just craft paints, acrylic craft paints. You want to do about 10% paint to uh, resin. You can do a little more, but it will start to mix kind of funny. And while you can use all kinds of mica powders and alcohol inks, there are all kinds of different things you can use to mix into your resin. You do want to probably test most of what you're using. Not all craft paints will bond properly with your resin. Well, uh, things like mica powder or alcohol inks that are mint, that are made to mix with resin, will do a better job. This is a tester's brand paint. It is a craft paint. Um, you use it really for hobby things like uh, model trains. My dad's huge on model trains. I grew up making little houses and things with him. And so this, I mean, it just gives you the best, most metallic look. Love it. I'm going to do a little bit of this metallic rose gold. You always want to make sure you mix or shake. As pretty as this paint is for most projects, I don't like how it looks in resin. And that is another thing to learn is that the paint will not necessarily look the same it does uh, once it's cured in resin as it does in the bottle. So before you do a huge piece, always best to test. <laughs> All right, we are also going to be using these rose gold flakes, but we'll be adding those right to our design as well as probably into some of the clear at the end. So I'm not going to do an individual cut for these. 
instead, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this into our cups. While it is easier to mix all our resin in one and then disperse it amongst the paint, it is um, risky because our resin being all together in one bucket will start to cure fast. The more resin in one spot, the hotter it gets, hotter it gets, faster it cools. So we wanna go ahead and separate this out into smaller cups so we have a longer work time. need a paper towel. We're going to try to put about 100 milliliters in each of these cups for our different projects that we're doing. Like I said, we're going to need very little for the actual gather sign. Um, and then the other four or five molds I'm doing will need more. Try not to wipe as much resin as we can. We can always add more resin to the cups, so it's always best to kind of start with a moderate amount and then move on. All right, like I said, we don't need as much in that one. So we've left about half in here Think we're gonna need more than that, but make it work. Make sure we put the parts with the silicone dripping down on our silicone mat, protect our table. Now let's stir these up. You can add more paint if you need it. The more paint you add, the more uh, solid or opaque that color is going to be. The less paint you add, the more transparent it will be. Pink. This is for our nutcracker. If you guys are following along over at the summit, the Christmas uh, Cricut Craft Fest, and you want to check out all these other projects I'm talking about, you can head over to my YouTube and all of the videos will make their way there. But if you are at the craft fest, you're probably only interested in our little gather sign because he's gonna be so cute. As we mix, it is going to help those micro bubbles come to the top, but the faster you mix, the more bubbles you're going to introduce. So still, Slow and study. All right, we're looking good. Go ahead and pop all the bubbles that have risen. You can really see them in this uh, copper. The uh, oil based of that tester's paint really brings the bubbles to the top. The thinner the layer of resin, the easier the bubbles are to pop. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep popping them as we pour all our different resins. All right, let's start pouring. All right, y'all, so our little mushrooms here are so cute. I have mixed an array of colors, mainly copper, and this clear with the rose gold flakes in it. Um, I made two mushrooms last year, and that was the kind of combination I liked the best. So that's the main thing we're going to go with. But I did also make a pink mushroom. So we're going to throw some of that in there. And then I have some white and some rose gold left over from another project. So we may use those as well. But these are our main colors here. 
Now, of all of these babies, we have one, two, three, four little tiny adorable mushroom molds. I cannot wait. These are, as you can see, one piece and they have supports on the bottom. Now I put them in this little baking pan so they can stand up. We also have a big top and a big base for a big mushroom. Now this guy is going to take quite a bit of resin. I don't know that I'm going to do him since I have those two big mushrooms. I'll link that video down below from last year. We're going to focus on these four and then if we have enough resin, we'll do the big one. If we don't, we're not going to worry about it. So starting off, do some pink in this little guy. You always want to pour these uh, taller molds in kind of a couple layers. So we're going to fill this guy like halfway up. Perfect. You know, let's just go ahead and use all this resin in this guy. And we'll just and good we'll just put a little bit of the flakes in the bottom but you mainly want to fill them in layers so halfway for the bigger one you probably need three or four layers and then pop the bubbles that come to the top these are smooth on the bottom they don't have any uh any place for the bubbles to get stuck. So as they sit, the bubbles will continue to rise and you can continue to pop those bubbles. Okay, this guy is already starting to cure. He's very hot, so we definitely need to get him in his mold because this is, I've never had this happen before. Oh, this is interesting. We will see if this guy cures properly or not. He is really already curing. I'm off of there. Ooh, I don't know about this. We're going to just put him in. And if this doesn't work, we'll do another one. This guy's little. All right, there we go. Dun, 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 dun. This guy is definitely curing. Oh, he's too hot. Oh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to mix more of that. Oh, that's frustrating on several levels, but that's okay. We'll move on. The oil-based paint from that guy really he cures faster than a lot of the other ones. So let's go ahead and fill this guy up with this. He will go around what's already there. Hopefully, it'll look good in the end. I mean, he was curing before our very eyes. Keep letting him just sink to the bottom there. Oh, let's do this guy with the white. Oh yeah, that's cute. I don't know why I'm saying that. It's not like it's any different than <laughs> pouring any other color. It just looks cute. I think he's cute. Ooh, we are really we're having all kinds of fun. All right.
We are really just like killing this. All right, we are going to leave this to cure for 24 hours, maybe even 48 with some of these big ones, and then we will demold them. These bubbles are gonna keep rising for a while and they are quite full, so I'm gonna leave them right here, put a cardboard box over them, pop those bubbles every five, 10 minutes until they are cured enough to take inside. And that won't take too long, maybe an hour or two. So I will see y'all tomorrow. So let's go ahead and unmold these bad guys and hope that at least some of them turned out. I think this little one is going to be okay, but he's just not going to be mixed because the pink cured before we put our clear in. It's not necessarily a bad thing, just different. So to unmold, we're just gonna pull that silicone uh, mold back. And then it's always hard to get the narrow part past the, the bigger part. I find that if you just kind of roll it and then you can get a finger in there and keep rolling. It's always counterintuitive because you feel like, oh, I'm hurting the mold. Oh, I'm gonna mess it up. You're not going to hurt the mold. It will go back. There we go. Right like that. See, just keep on pulling. And once you kind of can get in there. Oh, he's cute. You see that harsh line is when you let the two cure. So since the pink was already pretty cured and then we waited a couple hours before we poured the clear, we have that clear line, but that's okay. We will see how many of these little guys turn out. This is the main one I'm worried about that we really had to massage to get all the resin down inside that I don't know. He feels pretty solid. I'm like, I just don't know if I'm going to open this up and find like missing chunks inside where I didn't get, yeah, right there, didn't get resin all the way in and there was like an air bubble. But if there's just one or two spots, we can just put those spots in the back <laughs> as opposed to if it's a whole bunch of spots, then he may just be a sad little mushroom. Okay. So yeah, right there was an air bubble that we didn't get out. It's so hard to tell. This is, this is really the first project I've had where my resin cured so dramatically quickly to the point where I couldn't use it and I had already put some in a mold. So as much as I like to save the resin, I am I think it was a good idea that I just kind of cut my losses and went back out when it was not as hot outside. 
This one's going to be interesting, isn't it? We can get a finger in here to really create some space that will help. Okay. All right, I'm going to have to take it off screen. All right, so all I'm doing to really get it to come is I'm holding it and I'm pulling back away from the side. Here we go. Oh, he's pretty. Okay, so he does have this spot right here, which I could really pour some resin in, at least make him flat. But look at that. And you can even see, this is what I was kind of hoping with this guy, that uncured resin or the the fast cured resin, how it kind of like was all swirly inside. It came up and it met the very top of the mold. And then the clear kind of formed around it. And you can see down here all this clear resin that we've shoved down in there to fill up the extra spaces. That actually looks really interesting. All right. As you can see, this is only going to continue to be even more fun with the bigger pieces. There we go. As I say, this one shouldn't be too hard because it's only one, uh, one big layer. Okay, that's nice. I love the dark copper on the top and then all the ways the, the flakes interact with the sides. And then you just pop your mold back inside out. It is ready to go. Can I pour another one? Let's go ahead and do the, the bottom of the big mushroom. I was worried that we were gonna have maybe two or three of these turn out. That's why I ended up pouring the big one when the first little ones were such a like problem. It's like, let's pour the big one. That way we don't have, oh, that's pretty. I love when the copper and the flakes like interact. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't see how that's supposed to just literally like sit on there, but that's how it's supposed to go. As far as I can tell anyways. If there's another way and I'm just being dense because I've done that in the past, let me know. All right, little guy. I think this one we poured all the way, so he should be good. Oh, we've got some of that copper all the way at the bottom. I love the shape of this uh, mushroom top. He's our little pointed friend. Getting it, we're getting it, we're getting it. That's our resin on molding song. We sing it when we're doing this. Oh, he's cute. He's got the little O's. Oh. Okay. Okay. Cutie patootie. That one's that one's my favorite. He is a little like this very bottom edge, you can see like he has a little bottom edge. So we'll probably just run that over some sandpaper so he lays flatter. But that's an easy fix. Ready to go. And last one. Oh, this is our white one. I need some sanding on the bottom too. A lot of times when you do the flakes, you have to sand the bottom just because they don't, uh, 
Don't always lay as flat as simple resin. I, I don't have an example because I put flakes in the bottom of all of these. This guy was definitely the hardest to get out, this middle size. So we've got the white up here, and then it kind of cured a bit before we poured this. So I don't know. I definitely, I don't mind the hard line of these, uh, but I prefer, I definitely prefer when it mixes. So I also grabbed my other two Mushrooms. So these are the ones I did last year. I will link that video below, but I love the shape of these and I love that they are jars. <laughs> so you can actually put things in them. And I did use a slightly different pink. So I love this little collection. It's going to look super cute up on my shelf. I do think I need to make at least one more white and probably another pink to kind of mix the colors in properly. But I'm very happy with how these turned out. I hope you guys liked this project. If you did, uh, follow along. I've got plenty more resin coming, including a super cute uh, resin pumpkin with cheetah print on it. Cause you know, you need that. Also, while I don't necessarily want to waste resin, I do think I might try pouring a little and letting it cure enough before I do like a core to one of these guys, more of an intentional thing. To me, that core inside there with the clear on the outside, if done properly, I think would almost look like blown glass, how you have that twisted side inside of resin and then the clear casing. So this might be fun to play with more intentionally that uh, cured, twisted bit of resin inside of a clear coating so definitely have to try that so i will see y'all in the next video bye